There is none like him. There is none that can compare to him. For he is God all by himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to the Lord. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Yeah, shut Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus, for you are worthy, Jesus. Yeah, shut Hallelujah. Worthy, you are worthy, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, you are worthy, worthy, you are worthy, King. Lord of Lords, I worship you. Let us sing holy. Hallelujah. Holy, you are holy. King of kings, Lord of Lords, you are holy. Amen. Mm-hmm. 
all who come to pray, pray especially for the preacher, that God will anoint him and pray that we will receive whatever the word is. Amen. And we are standing on the promises of God. Praise Him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your loving kindness towards the children of men. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you, Lord God, for your many blessings towards your people. We honor you tonight, Lord Jesus. We exalt your matchless name, for there is no name like your name. For the sound of your name, Lord God, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are Lord to the glory of God the Father. We thank you, Lord God, for this privilege that you've afforded us to come together one more time in this place, in this fashion, to exalt your name, to lift up your name, Lord God, to hear your word, to hear a word from you, Lord. A word of comfort, a word of hope, a word, Lord God, that stands the test of time. Amen. Your word, Lord God, is a lamp unto our feet light. and a light unto our path, Lord God. Hallelujah. And tonight, Lord Jesus, we bless your name. Amen. We exalt your name, Jesus, for you alone is worthy. Thank you, Lord. Worthy to be praised, Praise worthy to be adored, Lord God. When we were lost in our sins, yes, Lord. when we were lost in our trespasses, when we had no direction, Lord Thank God. Lord. When we needed a, someone to rescue us, Lord God. You, Lord God, reached out with your strong arm, Lord. And you gave us salvation through Jesus Christ. And tonight, Lord God, we are basking in that great and wonderful salvation. For we owe the price, Lord God, that we could not pay. But you, Lord God. But you, Lord, who is rich in mercy. That even when we were your enemies, Lord. You came to our rescue, Lord. And you saved us. Because of your great love, where you have loved us, that you gave yourself as a ransom oh, yes, Lord. for our sins. For your word has declared, Lord God, that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. But your efficacious blood made all the difference. And for that, Lord God, tonight we are thankful. We praise you. We adore you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. For you alone is worthy. Yes. Worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. <clears throat> Father, we pray tonight, Lord God, that you'll bless your people in a very special way, Lord God. That the messenger, Lord God, will bring your message, yes. Lord, yes. to your people for such a time as this. You know all things, Lord God. You see all things, for by you all things exist. Yes. And by you, Lord God, all things consist, Lord Jesus. For without you, we can do nothing. But with you, Lord God, we can do all things. Our hope is in you, Lord. And tonight, Lord God, we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you'll touch your people, Lord God. Remember those who are sick. Remember those who are on their way, Lord God. I pray, Father, that you'll send your angels to guide and protect them, Lord God. Remember those who have a desire to be here, Lord God, but for some reason they're unable to be here. I pray, Father, that you'll speak to their heart, speak to their thoughts, Lord God, speak to their innermost being, Lord Jesus. And as we start this night, Lord God, for the not three nights, that will be here, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that your power will fill this place. I pray, Lord God, that your spirit will saturate this place, Lord God. 
I pray, Lord God, that you'll bring souls into this place, Lord God, that their lives may be transformed, Lord, that minds will be renewed, Lord God. And at the end, we will say it was good for us to be here. Take full control, Lord God. We come against principalities. We come against powers. We come against spiritual wickedness in high places. And we bind every force that come against this proceeding tonight, Lord God. And we release your power in the name of Jesus. Let your will be done, Lord God. As we commit everything into your hands. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. Tell you thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to be reading Galatians chapter 5. Boom. He don't do something. Thank you, Lord. Anthony. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Revelation 5. Hmm? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Praise Lord. Praise Glory to God. God. It's like Galatians chapter, <laughs> chapter 5. Okay. And we read alternately. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. The old I Paul say unto you that the people exercise Christ are perfect in nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. Though effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well, who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven, a little leaven in the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but me that troubleth you shall hear his judgment, whosoever he be. Now, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to flesh, but by love serve one another. For the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Yes, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye lay up the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, uh, lovelessness. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Enemies, murders, drunkenness, rowlings, and such things, such like are of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness. Temperance against us, there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh, the affections, and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit together. Let us not be desire of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Amen. 
You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the first night of our missions weekend. And we thank God for those of you coming in. We certainly look forward to others coming and that, amen, souls will reward to the kingdom of God as we continue to worship the Lord. We thank God for this young man who consented or committed himself to be with us tonight. We want to welcome him. And we want to welcome his traveling companion, I'm sure. <laughs> Amen. Amen. They are really close together. We thank God for his dear wife. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank God for her. She is, amen, here to support this man of God. Amen. Yeah. In fact, everywhere I see him on YouTube or anything, I guess what happened. His traveling companion. That's the Lord. And by the way, if she's a lawyer, you know. We're going to have to, <laughs> no, we're not going to do anything that we need to. <laughs> thank God for her. Amen. A young lady who's standing fast for the gospel. Amen. We have a strong delegation coming from Montego Bay. Amen. Amen. And always our international soup is leading. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for him. Amen. We're going to hear from them. We thank God for Minister Kelly. Mr. Kelly, God bless you. Thank you for coming. This is first time. And they're on the way to General Conference. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God for Dr. Uh, Barrett. And I'm looking over there when I say Barrett because AJ is a Barrett. So, you know, you never know. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And this is a sister. Yes. Okay. Shana Lee. That's who that is. Okay, beautiful. God bless you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Amen. We thank God for all of you. Thank God for Sister Maxine, who came in earlier on the 8th. God bless you, Sister Maxine. Amen. Amen. Our strong delegation coming from Baltimore. Amen. Amen. Led by. Praise the Lord. Sister Therese. Praise God. And she appointed these people. I'm going to see. Come back. Minister Benjamin, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. And since we probably won't have any testimony now, we're just going to hear from everyone. We're going to start. Uh, Dr. Brown, you want to come and greet the church? Amen, Sister Kelly afterwards, and then we'll have Pastor Kelly greet the church. God bless you. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God is a good God. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. I greet you in the name of Jesus, our Amen. soon coming King. It is indeed a privilege and an honor to be in the company of God's wonderful people tonight. And I'm so elated to be in this part of the earth. Yes. And uh, it's my first time this side, but I am honoring the Lord Jesus Christ for his goodness, his mercies, and we're transiting on to conference. But so important for us to pause and I give glory to the Lord for whose pastor and his family. Praise the Lord Jesus for taking good care of us. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel at home. And it's good to feel at home and to be in the company of good people. Amen. I just want to say the Lord bless you. Just endeavor to keep the faith. Endeavor to keep serving the Lord. Because the purpose and mission for us is to make heaven our home. Amen. And we have a duty, a whole, our whole duty is to serve God, to live for him, and to be an example to the earth. Praise the Lord. Tonight I take pleasure in just saying that God has been so good. Yes. So, Amen. such an awesome God. Yeah, hallelujah. You know, Glory. When, while we were up in the plane, I wasn't at the window, but I kept peeking wherever that light was shining through. And I look at the majesty of God. Yes. And just, you know, even though we think it is man that, you know, engineer and, you know, the it's knowledge, and it is God that gives it. That's right. Right. Yeah. It is God that uphold and allow us to do all of these great things. Yes. So I am thankful for his glory. I'm thankful for his majesty. When I see the work of his hand, yes. it just, I'm in awe of who God is. And it amazes me every time that I go up to see the clouds and see the beauty. And you know, when you look below and see the dwelling, you know, mm -hmm. the earth and the, the sea and yes. the, the mount, every the clouds, oh yes. Lord. Yes. 
How oh, great is our God. How oh, great is his name. He's the one just one forever the same. God is so good. And I am so happy to be in his presence. Hallelujah. I give glory to God. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Jesus. The Lord bless you. Praise God. Hallelujah. is happening around us to distract us right you know so much is happening whether it be sometimes it is right from within mm -hmm. the church here too <laughs> sometimes you know our household our families or you know whatever environment we might find ourselves in let us be very conscious and keep our focus i just want to encourage you to keep your eyes on the lord and to keep pressing because we want to make heaven our home yes. the lord bless you as you labor this side of the vineyard yes. let's continue to pray for each other and keep strong in the lord the lord bless you in jesus name. Amen. Amen. amen let's praise the lord everybody yes. come on let's praise the lord everybody yes. amen amen I say each time to members of King's Chapel, I said, you know, let me tell you something. When I go into a restaurant, I know exactly what I go for. What do I go for? Food. Food. Amen. 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 When I go to the pipe, amen. Nobody has to tell me to drink or to draw water. Right. I know what I need. Yes. Amen. And so when I come to church, what do I come for? I come to worship. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand and worship the Lord. Amen. Lift 
issues, they have their problems, they, you know, sickness. I said, okay, I want to send you to a place where there are a lot of people there, a whole lot of people. And I want you to walk around and just tell them what your problems are. Tell them what you're going through. And when they respond, they come and tell me. Yeah. So I said, okay, I'm going to send you up to Dove Cut. You know where Dove Cut is? <laughs> eh? Just walk around those graves and just tell those people what you're going through. Tell them your problems. And see what the answer will be. Amen. Let me tell you something. We are alive. Yes, sir. Whatever our issues are, whatever our problems are, praise God. Let's give God thanks for them. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Greetings. To Bishop Morris and First Lady Morris, all our leaders of this assembly, we're so happy to see you. Amen. Greet in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and to our noted minister, Amen. Minister Sean Shane, Shane. <laughs> Shane Brown, and Minister Tony Amen. You know, the first time we were discussing inviting a speaker for youth week at King's Chapel, and Brother Chevrolet Kato said, Yes, Pastor, I have a friend. I have a friend that I wanted to us to invite. I said, Tell me about this friend. And he started to tell me about this friend, and I um, call up his pastor and she said yes oh that's that's a, a powerful young man amen you don't have to worry amen he's humble amen. and he has a word the and let me tell you from we started uh, maybe you've been here about five times or more at king's chapel <laughs> amen each time we would meet especially you department pastor this is the man who wants. Yes. <laughs> amen. amen. And so God has been using this young man, amen, in the ministry. Um, and uh, we're so thankful to God when young men just give up their lives. He said, young man, has, he has his degree from the university, has his degree, and the Lord has placed it on his heart to go and minister. Amen. 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 Praise God. And I also want to commend. These three young men. Yes. Amen. Praise God. All the way from Jamaica. You have to study. I hear they are the house of God. Yes. So that God bless you, young men. I appreciate you. God bless you. We will continue to pray. Your strength. You could have gone somewhere else to play and to do other things. But thank God. You know. But when I came and I saw them outside, I said, oh God, thank God for yes. young men. Yes. I mean, we we're, we we're losing our young men. Uh, we we're losing them to other things. But thank God we have some young men who have dedicated their lives um, to God. And Virgin, please continue. Remember to pray for them. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 God will continue to strengthen them. Yes. Don't take it lightly, no. Do not take it lightly. Amen. We just want to present them to God. Amen. And 
I, I'm so happy to be here in this crusade, and um, we don't know what God has in store um, for us. Don't worry about the numbers, don't worry about whatever. Just worship, amen? As long as we worship God, amen, he's going to come in and, and, and do what he needs to do. And so, tonight I'm so happy, as I said before, um, to be here. I can just feel the presence of the Lord, amen, amongst us. And I just tell you, if we just start to worship, amen, if we just start to worship him, uh, the blessings are going to come down. And so God bless you. God bless you as we continue to worship the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise amen. God. We thank God for it. Minister Benjamin down there. Praise the name of the Lord, church. It is good to give him thanks and praise. Let us praise the name of the Lord. Let us praise the name of the Lord. One more time. Everything that has breath, and everything that has breath, praise the name of the Lord. I greet the household of faith, and I greet the shepherd of this flock. Praise God, and Pastor Morris, and First Lady Morris. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, always victorious, always watching over us. I thank him because the scripture says, now unto him yes. who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. And I thank God tonight that we serve a God who is able to do more than my puny mind can think. More than you can think more than you can ask, more than you can conceive, more than you can dream, more than you can envision. That is the God that we serve. Hallelujah. I give him thanks tonight because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out. Thank God for saving me. I thank him tonight because I remember the days. I don't know about you, but I am from rural St. Mary. And nothing is wrong with rural life. But let me tell you something. I take some water on my head. You'll never believe it. Oh, God. And here I am today. Praise God. Here we are today. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And we have one purpose. And that is to serve him. That is our reason of the service. I came home from work this evening. I was so tired. I'm still having a headache right now. But I think to myself, you know, if this was a work day, I would soldier on. I would make it. I would do it. Because here what? You want the reward that work has to give to you. But here it is. We serve a God that keeps on rewarding us. Even when we don't pray. God still remembers us. Even when we are not grateful. Because you know, I see some people and sometimes they can't even walk, they can't even talk. And we take these little bodily functions for granted. Not realizing that it is the goodness of God. Why we are here. And I am purpose in my heart. And I hope that you join me in that. <coughs> that while the blood is still running warm oh, yeah. in my veins, yeah. that we will worship. Yeah. I don't want the stones, which I consider these, the sticks and the stones, to worship on my behalf. Right. I am going to do it for myself. Yeah. 
Because, beloved, there is going to come a day when we lie on our bed of affliction and we can't seven and we can't eleven. But this day, Hallelujah. we can worship God. And so I give you greetings on behalf of my presiding prelate, Apostle D.M. James and First Lady Pastor Shirley James. We greet you. And yes, this is mission. This is mission. Right. Pastor, we are on the battlefield yeah. with you. We are fellow laborers in the service. Don't mind my voice. It is fall. Yeah. In the autumn, my voice goes and come. But we are fellow laborers together in this. In this video. Yeah. And your strength is my strength. Yeah. We are one. We are one man's children. Yes. Yes. And yes, we may worship at various assemblies. Yes. But we serve the only wise God. Yes. 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 The only wise God. And I thank God that sometimes I'm not even thinking of it. And someone who doesn't even belong in my assembly will call and say, Sister, such and such is the Leone. I have you on my mind. Yes. That is because Regardless of whether you are Beulah or like me, you are triumphant. We serve one God. Amen. One God. Amen. And when he calls you, you better call me and say, Sister Leone, I am praying for you. And when I feel you in my spirit, I will call you and I will say, I am praying for you. Because soon and very soon, we have to give an account. I thank God for you this night. Amen. One plus God is the majority. Yes. And as far as I am concerned, we are the majority tonight. Yes. And I thank God for you. God bless you richly. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God for Sister Minister and Benjamin. Amen. And for Triumphant Ministries. Praise the Lord. We thank God for everyone else who's come. We thank, I thank God for my wife. Amen. Who's up and running despite the pain and all that. You know, Lyndon Baines Johnson had a social secretary referred to as um, the hostess with the mostess. <laughs> so I usually talk about my wife as a hostess with the mostess. So we thank God for her. And thank God for all our ministers. Amen. And for everyone here working in this vineyard. We're going to be praying for Anaya. God is a healer, isn't he? Amen. But before we pray for her, I want to make sure that we understand that. I mean, we're going to ask a question. Do you know of any situation where God has failed? No. no. Never. So there's a consensus, right? That he has never failed, can fail. He may not work the way we want him to work. He may not want, and I'm not saying he may not want to, because there may be other situations by which he will not do that at that time, but he is able. Amen. We don't know what. And when, but we know he can do it. Yes. And those of us who come to Beulah know her. And it's not that we can't do anything. We can pray. Yes. Right? It's that we can deal with the situation. We know a God who can. Yes. And for that reason, we're going to stand. Those of you who are not from here, you may not necessarily know her. But you heard the outburst, and we know. So, we're going to be praying. Just call her name. If that's all you can do, call her name Anaya, right? Naya, right? If that's all you can do, that's just Janaya. Janaya. All right. We just call her that. And that's Sister Doreen's granddaughter. Oldest granddaughter. 
So let us just pray. You know, you know your God. You don't need to be calling him down. You know he's here. You don't need to send him anywhere. He's everywhere. So let us pray. Whatever you want to say to him, just say it. She's brought in, so we got to just anoint her. And you don't have to worry about anything. Oh, here it is. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, give you all the honor. Curse the giant power, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ah, hallelujah. Yes. Today, yes. possible, Lord God, for with you, all things are possible. Bless your name, Lord. 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 Bless your name, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Hallelujah. Spirit, like it's all set against you. Right Let's talk about Jesus, that King of Kings is He, the Lord of Lords supreme, throughout eternity. I'm the way, the truth, the life, the way. Let's talk about Jesus more and more. Yeah, let's talk about Jesus. That King of Kings is me. That Lord of
does like every day. There's something coming up to try to make you doubt a little, fear a little. But you know, Elder Palmer used to ask the sister, is the universe and God or God in the universe? And no stuff about it. And it's, it's in here. So what's going to stop him? Nothing. What's going to make him do anything he doesn't want to do? Let's talk about who? Jesus! Glory, hallelujah. We're going to receive an offering after which we're going to ask the traveling companions uh, to introduce the speaker tonight. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So we wanted to give willingly and generously to the work of the Lord. God bless you. Amen. As we just come rejoicing. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory. You know, the scriptures say what the devil meant for evil. God meant it for good. Father, we thank you, Lord, as you turn things around tonight. Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. All things. Thank you, Jesus. We're just going to wait for manifestation. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you for your blessings, Lord. Yes, for the many blessings that you have given each and every one of us for yes, tonight. Yes. Father, I pray to God that we will all give back a portion and give it willingly as unto the Lord. Let's talk about Jesus. Amen. 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 Please, um, guys, you can just come from the back and come, come around. Nobody to actually Hide me under the blood, Lord. Hide me under the blood. Hide me under the blood, Lord. Hide me under the blood.
tonight, God, show us your glory. Come in the glory tonight. Hallelujah. Because we give him praise. He is worthy. He is exalted. He is great. He is king of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. All day, King Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship him tonight. Are you here to give him praise? Are you here to make him feel at home? Thank you, Jesus. I greet you all. It's a privilege and an honor to be in the house of the Lord with you. I echo my sister's sentiments. I feel at home. Praise the Lord because we all have the same dad. Right? So I'm just visiting family tonight. Praise the Lord. I want to greet Pastor Morris, Lady Morris. Pastor Keller, Lady Keller, all the saints, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Tonight, I have the pleasure of introducing a young man who loves the Lord. Yes. He's my friend, he's my husband, my tennis partner, and my traveling friend, my buddy, my... Yeah, beautiful. We go on adventures together, we do a lot together. Beautiful. And so tonight, I can tell you that he loves the Lord. He doesn't like when people talk about him. And so I'm going to make him very uncomfortable for about 30 more seconds. <laughs> he was baptized in the name of Jesus at a very young age. He received the gift of the Holy Ghost. He has dedicated himself to prayer and studying the word. And he does it not just to preach. He does it because he genuinely enjoys yeah. the word. Yeah. You know, sometimes it makes me feel guilty because I don't think I love the Bible the way he does. <laughs> but there's just so much that when he studies it and he finds these treasures in there and he gets so excited to share them. You know, we go on what we call faith walks in the evenings if we can after work and we just talk about, you know, the word sometimes. And it's been such a privilege and such a pleasure to see him and to see how he expresses himself for the Lord. And so tonight I want to introduce to some, present to others, Evangelist Shane Brown and the Holy Ghost. I 
somebody's hand and tell them it's good to see you tell them you are blessed find somebody else tell them you are blessed you are blessed tell them you are blessed there's nothing the devil can do to stop it you are blessed you are blessed tell them you are blessed ensure that they receive it in their spirits tell them you are blessed you are blessed even if you are broke you are still blessed even if you don't have a car, you are still blessed. If you don't have a home as yet, you are still blessed. Go ahead and celebrate his holy name. He's worthy, he's worthy of all our praises. Be seated, please. It's truly a privilege to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Saul of Tarsus said, having obtained the help of God. We continue to this day ministering to both great and small and we honor the Lord for all that he has done for us. He has given us life. He has given us strength and we are truly grateful to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. 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 Greetings to all Jesus' children. Amen. It's wonderful to be in Missions Convention in Beulah Apostolic Fellowship Center. Put your hands together for this Amen. 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 And of course, I want to honor the Lord for the Reverend Pastor Horace Morris and Lady Claudia Morris. Put your hands together for them. Amen. They have been very kind to me, and I give the Lord thanks for them. It's a blessing, amen, to have met them, and I am grateful for the privilege to be sharing the, at the Lord's table in this particular assembly, yeah. amen. I'm, I'm honored and humbled to be sharing the word of the Lord here, amen. And of course, I must honor the Lord for Pastor Frank Kelly yeah. and his wife, who did hands together. Mother Kelly has been a mother to us over the years, and we give the Lord thanks for her and just about everyone that is here. Amen. amen. All the ministers and everyone, amen, and especially the young men. Yes. I give the Lord thanks yes. for the young men that are here. Amen. Amen. It's really a blessing, amen. I was talking the other day. I, I was mentioning the fact that David was indeed a great warrior, but one of the ways we know that he was a great king is that he had great men around him. 
Amen. Yeah. And, and, and they, we always talk about how David killed Goliath, how he slew Goliath. And uh, we, we hardly talk about when David was almost killed by yes, Goliath's right. brother. Yeah. And he was rescued by a young man Amen. that yeah. was in the military. And I give the Lord thanks for the hope of the ministry that rests on the back of these young men. And I give the Lord Amen. thanks. Praise God. Amen. And of course, my traveling partner is here. Amen. Amen. Praise my God. wife, I give the Lord thanks for her. And every now and then I careful to remember that you're not just blessed because of what God gives, but because of who he gives. Yes. Amen. 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 And I am what I am because of her and the grace of God. And I give the Lord praise for the hands together for her one more time. I want to be sharing the word of the Lord with you for a couple of nights. As I've been asked, I beg on Pastor Kelly to preach tonight, but he refused. So I'm just I'm just trapped. So I guess I'm going to have to try something tonight. Amen. Amen. I was telling him he can't be here and have me speak. I'm so unworthy. Amen. But since since he's given me the opportunity, I'll try to share a few words with you before I take my seat. Amen. Amen. Join me if you can to first, Second Corinthians chapter 5. Amen. And it's missions convention and uh, I've learned of the theme that it is stand fulfilling and maintaining purpose. And I want to begin tonight by reading from Second Corinthians chapter 5. And as I thought and as I meditated on what to speak about for the next few nights, amen, it, it, it was laid on my heart to speak amen, generally on the subject, greater is he. And I want to use that as a sub-theme for the next few nights, but I want to specifically be reading from Second Corinthians chapter 5. And of course, I, I, I would touch on 1 John chapter 4 and, uh, and verse 4. So if you can, stand with me. I'll read in your hearing from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I want to begin the reading from 14 through to 60. When you have found it, please say amen. 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 All right, let's... It says, for the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then were all dead, then everyone was dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore hence know we no, no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now, henceforth, Know we him no more. Amen. And, and first John four and four said, For he said, Ye are of God and children and have overcome Amen. them. Yes. Because greater is he greater that is, is he in you than he that is in the world. Yes. Bow your heads with me if you can. Glory, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for tonight because your word is already established and as we come in your house we desire to hear a word from you yes Lord. and we pray that we will perceive hear and understand and see and perceive that our hearts might be transformed i know the devil wouldn't have it that we should hear your word tonight but yes. i pray that you will speak to us in the name of jesus Hallelujah. Bring deliverance to every mind and to every spirit. Help us to hear you. We come against every attack of the enemy right now. Every attack against the mind. Every attack against the spirit. We send them back to the pit of hell. They shall not have dominion over us. 
in the name of Jesus, bring deliverance to those that are captive and to those that are oppressed. We receive your blessings. We receive your strength. Strengthen us again, we pray. In Jesus' name. Clap your hands everywhere. Like you're celebrating, clap your hands everywhere. And give him praise. Give him praise. Go ahead for a few more seconds. Clap your hands. Clap your hands and, and give him praise. He's worthy of all our praises. Amen. Amen. Be seated, please. I want to talk a little bit about the zeal of the believers. I, I want to talk a little bit about that for a minute. And I've got to open, of course, by having us thinking about the times that we're living in and how the times that we're living in are very troubling for the believers, yeah. very troubling, very challenging. And I, I would say to a certain extent that sometimes we may feel a little bit ambivalent, a little bit happy and a little bit sad. Sad because of how challenging ministry can be at times. You know, when you are serving the Lord and you're trying to be saved and you're in a position where you're trying to help others to be saved, that can be so challenging. Sometimes you're not understood. Sometimes you can't understand others. And it is so challenging to serve in the ministry, you know. We, we, we are faced with so many obstacles sometimes. And living here in America, things are very difficult because, especially for individuals who have come here and we sometimes seek an opportunity to get by socioeconomically, <laughs> We find ourselves sometimes working so hard and so long and it seems as if progress is not being made, you know, working two, three jobs, but yet the bills are barely being met and you hardly can serve God the way you want to, you know, the desire is there, you know, to serve God, but the challenges are so real. You know, I, I, I was speaking the other day about Pharaoh. I was talking a little bit about Pharaoh when Moses showed up and said, Thus saith the Lord, let us go in the wilderness three days to worship. And well, Pharaoh thought to himself that he had them under enough pressure. But since they said, well, we need a three-day holiday to go and have a feast. He said, well, you are idle. You have extra time. So let me give you something else to do. Now you're going to get the straws yourself and make the same number of bricks in the same time. And, and it reminds me of 21st century America, the first world, how... You are trying to serve God and you're trying to worship, but the bills keep climbing over your shoulder, yes, Lord. you know. And you find that every time you're trying, you know, to, to progress in the ministry, something happens and you have to take another job, you know. Something happens and you realize that you need to meet some more bills, so you have to work some extra hours. It's challenging, and, and that's the sad part, but, but the good part of it that makes me exciting is that all of these circumstances causes us to engage in the kingdom of God. Yes. Because that will necessitate a move of God in our lives and in our ministries. And we begin to realize that in times like this, we have to determine who we're going to serve. You have to determine that if you're going to serve God, you have to be committed in serving Him. Now the commitment causes God to move because it engages our faith. Yes. And we find that when we are committed to a certain extent, it causes God to intervene and 
he calls it causes him to come and interrupt the circumstances of our lives have you ever noticed that that sometimes when you see certain moves of god it's under certain circumstances when we we feel oppressed and when we feel that things are getting difficult and and then all of a sudden you find that the kingdom of god comes and it just interrupts everything yes. I, I want to let you understand that the kind of god that we are serving he's not a coward he is not scared of what's happening in the world That's he's right. not scared of the system of the world if god has to move in washington dc in order for his will to be done he is going to do yes. it he's not afraid afraid of any head of state or any head of government or anything but I want to talk to us a little bit about our conviction with regards to the kingdom of God. Because what is happening is that within our minds, we sometimes put a limit on what we want God to do. Because we have determined in our minds the circumstances under which we prefer God to operate. Yes. Within our minds, we make a little box and, and we fit it in our culture and we fit it in our programs and we say, God, we want you to move within 24 by 10 inches of this space and no further. Uh, but, but the kind of God that you're serving is not the kind of God that you can subject to your opinion. Yeah. He's not subject to our culture. He's not subject to our programs. And, and, and the challenges that we're facing is that we preach an omnipotent God. But we think about him in a very limited way. We, in our expressions, when we come to church, we declare his omnipotence. But in our walking, we are very limited in how we think about God. But can I challenge you for the next couple of minutes before I take my seat that God is beyond every program that we can think about. I believe in a time like this, God is looking for a church that is not limited to the space that they are in. Yes. He's looking for a church that is open to a move of God wherever he wants to move. We can't say, God, that I want you to op operate in this building. I want you to only move during our missions convention. We only want to move on a Sunday. You see, if you're going to limit God to the programs that our church has constructed, we are going to have trouble in this world. Yeah. Because if we are aware of what's happening in the world is that the world is opposing our, our, our culture. It is opposing our program and, and our structures. And, and I, I'm not sure about what it's like here, but in, in some places in Florida, it's even difficult to acquire a building for us to worship. And now the question is, are we not going to ask God to move? Or are we not going to anticipate a move of God because we are in a small building and we are saying, God, we don't want you to move here because this is a little space and there is so much and no more that can be done. But I want to speak to a group of people here tonight that understand that the kind of God that you're serving is a God that is not limited to our finances. He's not limited to our timing. He's not limited to our imagination. He is beyond all that we can ever think about. Uh, I want to challenge you right now. I just want to challenge you right now to break down the four walls that are around our mind concerning who God is. 
You might be in a small building with four walls, but take those walls from out of your mind. Take the roof out of your mind and tell God, God, this is your place. This is your house. You can do whatever. Is there anyone that want to lift your hands right now and give God praise? He's worthy of all our praises. It's important then that we understand this. We, we, we are going to need conviction. Believers, can you lift your hands with me and say, Lord, help me to be convicted. We, 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 we are going to need conviction because the question is, what if we never get the building that we want? What if the visitors that we want to come never show up? What if we do not get the financing that we need? What if the municipality does not give us the permit to build the structure that we want? Are we going to become quail in our walk with God? Ah, yes. Well, what if things don't go the way we expect them to go? Are we not going to push on and serve God? I want to encourage every believer that it is time to push on. You, you don't need much. You don't need as much as you think you need in order to push on. You just need that conviction. Can you lift your hands everywhere and give a prayer? It's here then that I begin to realize, I thought a little bit, I thought a little bit about the three Hebrew boys. And the reason I thought about them is that there came to a time when Nebuchadnezzar, as a young teenager, he went to Jerusalem and he deported. Uh, at least in the third deportation he broke down the walls and set the city on fire and what he did he took among the, 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 the Hebrews he took the, the best among them the wisest the most educated he blinded their king and he killed their princes and he castrated the boys and brought them down to Babylon and the question is, is they are they not going to worship God because they are now in Babylon they are not in the safety of the walls of Jerusalem and the temple is now burnt down. Think about uh, what we are living in, the circumstances under which we are living in and how it reminds us of the inconvenience of the season in order to worship God. Where these boys lost everything, they lost their king, they lost their princes, they lost everything that they had, they were castrated and now the question is, is, are you now going to bow down and worship the Babylonian God because you're no longer in the city that you're used to? Ah, uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. And I want you to think about this with me, how many times we serve God just based on the convenience of the circumstances. We worship and serve God if we're in the right building and if we're among the right people. Ah, uh, yes, but, but the Bible said when, the, when Nebuchadnezzar set up that image in the valley of Dura, in the plain of Dura, he said, well, you've got to bow down and worship these gods. And, and, and when everybody started to bow down at the playing of the music, the boy said, well, we are not going to bow. King, the king got upset. He, his face was changed. He was angry. And he said, you God, I'm going to turn up the fire seven times hotter. And when I play the music, again you've got about the boys and well oh king we are not careful to answer you concerning this we know that our God will deliver us but even if not uh, I want to speak to a group of people that are convicted you see you see your conviction is not when God delivers your conviction is if he does not deliver uh, 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 that's where the conviction really lies. It, it's not when he delivers you, but but the question is, if he does not deliver you, what are you gonna do? What what will your decision be? And I want to speak about this little zeal for a minute because. When I think about this, I begin to recognize that in order for us to be truly convicted believers, we have to understand the source of our conviction. 
we we have to understand the root of the conviction because the thing about the conviction is that the source of the conviction is going to determine the intensity of the conviction uh, because if you're here for example and you come to worship just because of somebody else and because somebody invite you or you're expecting to see your friends you're not going to worship the way you should you see but when the source of your conviction is your knowledge of God then that that will impact how much you worship that that will determine that even if you come here and the lights are not working the music are not the music is not working you're still going to worship God because the reason you came here is not because of your friends the, the reason you came here is because of the love of God you see the, the, I want us to understand the, 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 the idea of the intensity or the extent of our conviction it, it's like saying God so loved the world that he gave and, uh, that, that expresses the intensity of the conviction in other words that, that you love God so much that no matter to what happened you're still going to worship God the conviction is I, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth uh, then we have to understand that when we think about the source of our conviction believers it, it boils down to how much we know God's love it, uh, when we think about the knowledge of the love of God that is what really motivates us to continue serving God under the circumstances that we are living in. Is there anybody that understands that there are times when you are living as a child of God, only your knowledge of God's love alone can keep you. Because some circumstances that we face sometimes are the children of God. If you were to follow those circumstances, you will never ever come back to church. Is, is there anyone that can testify that there are times when you don't even feel like coming into the house of God you don't feel like worshiping sometimes you tell yourself that you're not going back to church but when you start to remember how good God has been <laughs> is there anybody that can testify that, that there are times when you remember the goodness of God You told yourself that, well, I, I don't feel like going anymore. I, I don't feel like worshiping anymore. I, I don't feel like giving God thanks anymore. But you start to remember where the Lord has brought you from. You, you start to remember how good God has been to you. Then all of a sudden you realize that you start to put on your clothes and you start to lift up your hands and you start to worship the Lord. I, I want to give somebody a few seconds right now just to remember how good God has been to you and I just want to ask you just to open up your mouths and shout a praise because of how good God has been. I feel the spirit of God here. I, I want you to understand this believer. There, there has to be a source of your conviction. Touch your neighbor if you can and ask your neighbor, why are you still worshiping God? After everything that you've been through, why are you still giving God praise? You've lost so many family members. You've lost your friends. In fact, you are broke right now. You don't have any money in the bank. But you're still praising God. You're still giving God glory. Because you remember what God has done for you. I, I feel the spirit of God here. It is the knowledge of the love of God. When you remember and when you bear to mind how, how far he went in order to save you. I, I don't know about anybody else. There is a level of gratefulness that goes into the conviction that you have. You see, when you know that you shouldn't have been here. When you know that you should have been dead when you know that nobody expected that you would have gotten saved nobody expected that your life would be this transformed everybody gave upon you they thought that you would have turned out to nothing but God reached down his hand and he snatched you as a plant from the burning can somebody open up your mouth right now and shout hallelujah 
I feel the spirit of God here. I feel the spirit of God here. Uh, be, be seated, please. I want you to understand this. When I think about the love of God, the Bible talks about the love of God in that He loved us so much that He gave. But when I think about the love of God, Pastor Morris, I recognize that when we look at the love of God, we, we, we can't think about this agape without thinking about His omnipotence. And the reason I talk about it is that He loved us so much that He gave His only begotten Son. And I want you to follow me through here. He, he gave his only begotten son and therefore he's justified in the sense that we were all sinners but he laid our guilt upon him and then nailed him to the cross. Well he is justified as a judge. But the question is, is he a good father? Because he gave his innocent son and he laid our guilt on him. Well he is justified as a judge. But how good he is as a father, in that he gave the life of his son. Well, he's a good judge, but is he a good father? And I want you to think about this with me then. That if he is going to love us so much, he's got to have the power to love us that much. Because he gave his only begotten son and he is justified as a judge. In order for him to be considered as a good father, he's got to have the power to raise him again from the dead. Because you can't leave your son alone in the grave. You've got to have the power to deliver him out of the grave. I feel the spirit of God here. Then I recognize that the love of God and the omnipotence of God are very inseparable. Because if he's going to love you the way he says he does, he's got to have the power to deliver you out of the hand of the enemy. How can he love you that much? And he's not able to set you free from the power of the enemy. Can somebody open up your mouth right now? Yeah. And shout hallelujah. Uh, open up your mouth one more time. Uh, hold the music please. Hold it for a few minutes please. Uh, when I think about this I begin to recognize uh, that the source of our conviction uh, is the knowledge of God's love and the knowledge of his power. Uh, because I wouldn't serve God the way I do uh, unless I understand what he's able to do. Uh, I feel the spirit of God here. Uh, I wouldn't worship him the way I do uh, unless I understand the kind of power that he has. Uh, I know him and I know his power. Uh, that's why when I am sick I still worship. Uh, because he has the power uh, not only to heal the sick uh, but he has the power to raise the dead uh, I feel like lifting him up uh, do I have a few more minutes before I close uh, I feel like giving God praise uh, is there anybody that understand uh, that the reason for our drive uh, as the people of God uh, after all the hell that we've been through uh, the reason you keep on Ongoing uh, is because of the knowledge of the power of God. Uh, when you know that He has the power uh, to deliver you out of the hand of the enemy, uh, there is a reason to hope. Uh, the reason I am disconvicted uh, about serving and worshiping God uh, because the knowledge of His power uh, has given me hope. Uh, and every day that I wake up as a child of God. I'm always expecting a move of God because where God is concerned it's never too late for a move of God. Can somebody open up your mouth right now? 
and shout a praise to God on the music please it's, it's a knowledge of his love it's the knowledge of his power and this is what Paul was saying that it is the love of Christ that constrains us pastor in other words when we recognize how much he loves us I can't help but love him in return after all that he gave up for me that I might have life and I might have it more abundantly has anyone here ever been really in love I mean really in love you love your person so much that no matter what anybody else says about them you're not going to betray them no matter how they speak negatively about them you're not going to turn your back on them and this is what Paul is saying when I come to understand how much Jesus loves me it brings a conviction in my spirit I feel the spirit of God here when I begin to recognize that he never had to deliver me from the hand of the enemy there should be nobody here who worship God out of a sense of entitlement you don't come here because you deserve to be here you come here because God has been good can somebody open up your mouth and praise God like you know that you are here out of privilege and not prerogatives you open up your mouth and celebrate it when you know that you don't deserve this kind of love somebody open up your mouth and shout a praise to God. He said that the love of Christ also constrains me. I don't turn my back on God because he's been too good to me. Might as well I begin to close. Do I have a few more minutes? Give somebody high five if you can. As a neighbor, God has been too good to me. I don't think I can backslide. Or if I wanted to, when I remember where the Lord had brought me from, how he picked me up and he turned me around. I can't be so broke that I cannot praise God. I can't be so low that I can't praise God. Somebody open up your mouth right now and shout a praise. And the shout that you shout right now, I want you to shout it with conviction. Like you believe in your spirit. It's got to be your conviction. Like you know in your spirit that God is a good God. No matter what happens. I feel the spirit of God here. I feel like giving him glory. I think I've got to close right now. But it is the knowledge of Christ that death constrains us. It keeps me under control. When I feel like giving up and when I feel like throwing in the towel, the love of God keeps holding on to me. When I feel like walking away, when I remember his love, his love keeps me yoked. Is he up? His love keep me in subjection. It is not church rules that keep you together, Pastor. I tell you, it is not how long you've been coming to church. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all, I feel like I'm lifting him up. I feel like giving God praise. Give somebody high five with serious conviction and say, neighbor. God has been too good to you. You can't curse him right now. He's blessed you too much. You don't have any curse in you. Dr. Masha. Shanda. I feel the spirit of God. I declare right now. With apostolic authority. That you're not going to backslide. I declare it in the name of Jesus. You're not the love of God by the power of God will keep you you're not going to lose your mind because of the trouble
When you feel as if you've had enough, and your brain and your mind and the devil tell you, and even church people tell you, you can't take anymore. When you remember God's love for you, you just keep going. The love of God literally hangs on to you. Ayasha. Who shall? I want to tell you this as I close oh, up. Jesus. You can't be in any circumstance in life that can separate you from God's love. No, 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 no. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I, I want you to understand the reason it's this powerful elder is that the love that is at work is not just your love for God, you know. Right, right, right. It is God's love for you. That's yeah, amen, amen. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it, that's it. Jesus. He never says, Who shall separate us from our love for God? Mm -hmm. He said, Who shall separate us from the love of God? From the love of God. Uh, amen. It is love. Yes. I, I want you to understand. I, I don't want to get too. I don't want to get too academic, but the language that was used, the part of speech that was used in that language, if it, in the Greek it is the genitive sense, and what it means, it means it belongs to him. Yeah. The love. Is his possession. His possession. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank I want you to understand that this kind of love is not just an affection that passes through no. when you get happy. The genitive sense is suggesting that this love belongs to God. Yes. Glory, so when the circumstances around you change, the love still belongs to God. Hallelujah! Ah, yes, So in the famine and the persecution, it is still God's love. It is. It is not a mood. That's right. Where when situations change, it swings with it. Uh-uh. Some people in your life, they, 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 their kind of love is a mood love. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just how they feel on the day. Mm -hmm. And perhaps what you have. If you have enough money, they will have a good mood. Right, yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but the love of God is God's possession. Yes. So nobody can stop God from loving you. That's right. Because it is his love. That's right. That's right. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. It is so strong that even when you don't love him, yeah. he, still love you. he still loves you. He still loves you. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Yes, sir. When you feel like giving up, when you feel like throwing in the towel, he, loves he still loves you. Yeah. When you tell yourself, you see, the, the, the love of God doesn't have the kind of pride that all love has. That's right. When we love a person and the person says, you know what, I'm done with this relationship. You tell them, go on. Mm. You don't want anybody to tell you, say, boy, they, 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 they may walk out the front, you tell them to stay. No, you're not going to do that. You're going to say, go on. <laughs> Even when it hurt you. But when you tell God that you're walking out, his love follows you through yeah. the door. If you end up in a bar, his love followed you right to the bar. The church people are not going to follow you to the bar, no, but the love of God will follow you to the bar. Oh, yeah, Masha. When you're in the wrong bed with the wrong person, the love of God is in that room. Ah! You're when you're in the wrong car yes. and you should meet in that accident and die, the love of God 
yeah. the same God that you walked out on still keep you. Yeah. What am I to do? Amen. 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 Who shall separate us? Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah, Masa. Yeah. Glory. Not even your friends, not even your own shortcomings can separate you. I wonder what would have happened to us if God only loved us when we were righteous. Oh, oh God, oh God, oh God. Yes, sir. I wonder where would I be if God's love for me required me to be holy? My Jesus. I wonder which one of us would be saved. None, none. My Jesus. Oh, yes, I want to open this altar right now. I want to pray for somebody. Is there somebody that wants to come to this altar? If you're not saved, I want you to come to this altar right now. The love of God is here for you tonight. The love of God is here for you tonight. You don't have to continue in sin. You don't have to continue in the circumstances that you're living under. There is no requirement for you to be good for God to love you. The only thing he wants is that you know how much he loves you. Thank you, Jesus. Can somebody lift your hands right now and worship the Lord? Hallelujah. The love of God is greater than all your shortcomings, my brother. Can somebody take this baby? Is it possible? Is it possible? I want to be I want to lay my hands on you, sir. I believe the spirit of God is here. Hallelujah. The love of God is greater than every shortcoming in your life. Hallelujah. The love of God is greater than every failure. And you cannot be too far where God cannot reach you. It doesn't matter what your mind tells you. Even if your mind tells you that you're too far. Even if your mind tells you that God cannot reach you where you are. God heard the prayer of a prophet from the belly of a fish yes. under the bottom of the ocean. Yes. God can hear you. And right now, as I lay hands on you, I want to know, to know that God is hearing your heart yes. right now. Spirit of the living God. Minister to his spirit right now. Minister to his mind right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Reveal your love to him. Koshahata. Surabaka Shiva. Baba Sekata. Kapaka Baba Bako. Utoko Shiva Bakanda. Shoko Ibi Kiki Siba. The Spirit of God is overshadowing you right now with his love. You're going to experience the Spirit of God in a way you've never experienced Him before. Hallelujah. Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit right now yes, is speaking to your mind. Yes. Receive Him and hear Him in your spirit right now. In the name of Jesus, I break every yoke off your life. Yes. Jesus. You will not be anybody's prisoner. No. You will not be a prisoner in your own mind. No. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. I set you free by the power of God tonight. Right now, Lord. I set you free by the power of God tonight. That I lay hands on you. I declare to you tonight that you will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus. 
Open your spirit right now and receive him. Open your spirit right now and receive him. Spirit of the living God, fall on him right now. Fall on him. Lift your hands, sir, just for a minute. The spirit of God is on your life. The spirit of God is on your life. The spirit of God is on your life. God is going to use you to do his will. God is going to use you to change lives. Yes, you. Yes, you. Hallelujah. Yes, you. Shana Asa. I don't care what anybody else says. I don't care what your mind told you last night. Right now, I declare it, and it is so. From the crown of your head, down to the soles of your feet. In the name of Jesus, Spirit of the living God. Fall right now. Fall on his life right now. The anointing of God is upon you right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost right now. From the crown of your head. Down to the soles of your feet. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. That's the spirit of God upon your life. The Spirit of God is speaking to your heart right now. The anointing of God is resting upon your life right now. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come my sister, let me lay hands on you right now. Spirit of the living God, bring her the deliverance that she prays for. It is so. Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. It shall not have dominion over you. Not anymore. Now, 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 now. now. I command your life to be transformed. I command you to be free. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Receive the power of God in your life. Receive the power of God in your life. As I lay hands on you, every yoke on your life is being destroyed right now. Right now. Every yoke on your life, I command them now to be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Be delivered. Be delivered. Be delivered. Be delivered. Be delivered, be delivered now, now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody open up your mouths right now. Hallelujah. And begin to praise God. Every yoke, every chin is destroyed. Every chin, every chin. Every chain, every chain, every chain. Every chain, every chain. Yes, they're falling out of your life. They are falling out of your life tonight. Tonight. Shakura Kaba. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody open up your mouth and begin to worship God. Somebody open up your mouth. Somebody open up your mouth. Take a few seconds, open up your mouth and worship God. Open up your mouth everywhere and worship God. Come on, come on, take a minute right now and give him praise. Somebody is being delivered right now. Somebody is receiving deliverance right now. Somebody. Hallelujah. 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 H
He's worthy of all our praises. He's worthy of all our praises. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on So God bless you and thank you for coming. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence Amen. with great joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and honor, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. Let all those who know that God loves you say Amen. 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 Another time, amen. amen. Bless the Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming.
Bless the Lord. Greet somebody. Greet somebody. So, 